We've come to GA Sliding Head in Dundee to find out what they can produce with 26 Sliding Head Star Machines. Welcome to Swarf and Chips. We're here at GA Sliding Head in Dundee, and this company's been going for about 30 years. They've got 26 star machines. It's absolutely amazing the amount of sliding head expertise within these four walls. Now, we start, as with many sliding head shops, at the material rack, which is obviously beautifully organized, as expected, all color-coded. And I mean, I asked one of the technicians earlier whether color coding was to do with diamonds or material. It's not. They have a software system that handles organization of all the material, and the software will say, okay, we've got 25 mil bar, it's made out of, I don't know, it's beryllium copper, but it's got a yellow code. So you go and it looks something to it like, looks like a bit like beryllium copper, looks like it's 25 mil, it's yellow, that's it, that's the material I need. And this brings me on to obviously Intico, our main sponsors, thank you very much, Les. Um, Intico have got 17 million pounds worth of uh, special steels and alloys in Cheltenham, which are ready for next day delivery. So if you need any material, check out Intico for your special steels and alloys. And also don't forget to like and subscribe um, on the MTD channel uh, to watch more Swarf and Chips. Now, Material is a massive thing at sport, uh, sliding heads. Sometimes in standard machine shops, you'll see square parts, square material, round material, and loads of different bits of material rack. But the nice thing about sliding head shops is, because it's all round, it's all pretty much two meter, three meter, actually mostly three meter actually, you can fit everything you need in such a small space, which must be an absolute godsend when, when unit sizes are, are definitely at a premium. All right, I'm going to go over and talk to Logan on, I think it's an SR10. We're going to have a quick look, talk about uh, small part manufacture and inspection. And here we go, Logan. We're here at the SR10. Now, you've got a bank of these at GA sliding head amongst many machines, but these are absolutely tiny machines. What max diameter can they make? We could go up from three mil, zero to basically eight mil uh, in diameter. Um, all different size bores would drill up from maybe 0.4 up to one mil drills as well. So yeah, really small stuff. Yeah, you wouldn't imagine that there'd be a machine dedicated to such small diameters, would you? But there's actually a lot of parts that still fit in that range. Can we have a quick look at some of the parts here yeah, and tell us course, cause yeah. what, what, what they are, what kind of operations you have to do on them? Of course, so this is a simple drawing here. Um, it's quite a simple part, but there's a lot of turning. Um, there's boring at the back. We could sometimes mill out if it's too much for the tool to handle. Um, so it is a quite a simple part. Um, but there's a lot of operations to that. And here's the actual part here, which looks a yeah, hell of a lot smaller than the drawings into a good yeah, scale size, course, but you can yeah, see yeah. the part itself is absolutely How tiny. Are, yeah. It's so hard to inspect, and like I said earlier, it's so hard to inspect. Um, yeah. so, so when you make a lot of these, what kind of volumes are we talking? Talking between 400 to 1,000. Okay, so 1,000, 400,000. And do you have to inspect each, every single one of them? No, not at all. We do it in batch, batches of one every 25, one every 35 components and use our measuring equipment that we've got down in the facility we've got, yeah. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the vision equipment later in the, in the video, yeah. but it's all about um, inspecting in batch, batches because you can't do every single one of these. But one thing that you guys, I guess, invest in um, with Star is the fact that you can run parts, you don't have to inspect every single one. Exactly. The machines are very, very good at repeatability, so they're constantly turning out mach uh, machine parts to the nearest thou or tens even. Um, yeah, very reliable. And you see you've got 418 being made here. Is that the 470? Is that the max? Is that when it stops and you go in um, inspect? Yeah, so once it gets to that level, it hits 470. We then come over, check the next one off, and bump up another 35 or 40. And that's the total we've made today so far. So they do churn out quite a lot of components every day. So I guess if you've got this making another 50 ready for inspection after that, then you can have someone running maybe two or three machines? Correct, yeah, that's right. And we try and share it amongst the people that work here, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so we're gonna let's let's move on. Thank you very much, Logan. We appreciate that. We're gonna move on from the from the small star cell, um, and I'm gonna have a look at some of the bigger machines. And moving on to the bigger parts of the machine shop, we're not talking about eight eight millimeter now. We're talking SR20. This can do much larger diameters, and they've got a lot of uh, a lot of these machines. I'm trying to find Sean here, and he's left me to it. He's gone over there. Sean, come over, Sean. We need you. So. Sean has been running, uh, working at GA Sliding Head for 11 years, same as Logan. Hello, Sean. You tried, you tried to get rid of me there, didn't you? Sorry. So you, I was just saying to, to, to our audience that you've been working at GA Sliding Head for 11 years with yeah. Logan. You guys, yeah. did you start? On the, did you start on the same day? Yeah, exactly. Same day we started. Yeah. So when we first got together, we got teamed together. 
And then at that time, we kind of done the exact same things. We were doing the calls together, the, the, all the guy bushes and all that kind of stuff. So you started off as an apprentice here at GA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what machine were you running? It was the SR1620, which we spoke about before, yeah. So yeah, that was pretty good. And how, what, what, what was it like to run? How old was it? Yeah, it, was, it was the oldest machine in here at the time. It was 1989, I think it was. 1989, so that's, yeah. it's been around, for, it's been around yeah. a bit longer it's than we, than we have. So. It's older than me, so. Yeah, I've got to say, it's older than me as well, I've got to say. <laughs> so, so, yeah. yeah, so uh, but we've started, and since then, obviously, the machines have got so much better. So, uh, what do you think has changed specifically? Talking about, let's, for example, the SR20, how is that different to the old SR1620 built in 1989? Uh, there's a lot of stuff, like the, the drilling stations are a bit different. It used to be like a, it's a piston sleeve that came out that used to do it, but now it's a, a static drilling sleeve that we have. That's mostly the big change from them, really, but obviously it's more, it's more advanced now, really. Have they become more general and modular so you can mix and match all the little adapters and, and bits and pieces? Definitely, definitely. They're so much more advanced than what they used to be. Yeah, that's yeah. I've not got much experience in sliding head, I'm, I'm ashamed to admit. Yeah. And there's quite a lot of little adapters and, and components that you can buy by third party or make yourself or buy from, from the manufacturers themselves. It almost seems like it's kind of like a Lego kit uh, to, to build yeah. your own machine. Well, we do. We actually do make parts as well that we can make two or three parts to them and connect them ourselves and send them to the customer. So we do do that as well. Uh, I know a lot of people in this industry do do that a lot. I've seen parts of like four or five parts together, but we do two or three that get sent to the customer. Brilliant. And so let's talk about the parts that you make as well now. You guys do, uh, you, do you, you work in every kind of material that I've heard of. You guys do ink canal, titanium. Yeah, yeah. So we do... Uh, Stainless steels, UNS, uh, copper, brilliant copper. Uh, peak, that's, that's a hard one to machine that's just that's so swarthy in it. Yeah, I bet it just strings around. So soft and you just can't cut really well at all. So that's what the hardest one we do cut, purely for swarth, because you can't pick up on it that, that much. So sometimes you have to man that kind of machine, so you'll have to get your air holes on it, blow the swarth away, pick it up. So if a big quantity comes in, a, a peak, we're not really happy with that. No, you're not happy, but no. you've still got to do it, yeah, right? Yeah, you got to do it, yeah. But, but it's because you've, you've, you've had your head stuck in sliding head machines for 11 years. If you come, come around here, Sean, for 11 years, I guess, you, you just know how it works. Um, let's talk, so you've got some shadow graphs yeah, on the so shop that, floor here. Uh, that's some of new shadow graphs. We got them about four weeks ago. Uh, so I've got shadow graphs in there, two of them brand new. We've got one done in the inspection area. We've also got two sets of drop clocks there. So that'll check our depths, the bore depths and stuff like that. The they can, can they go in really tight bores? Most of them, yeah, yeah, most of them are quite tight. Yeah, they can Because remember you had like a 1.2 drill that had a five times D or something, was it? Yeah, it was six times D or sometimes D, yeah. So we wouldn't check it with any of them tools there. That would just be a gauge, like a kind of pin gauge we'd do that with. And but so when we looked at the SR10 and it was on like a preset count and once that counter hits another 50 parts, yes. that's where someone goes, takes one out of the bucket and goes and puts it in the shadow ground. Yeah, so it depends what it is. You would either check your Venny or mic. If it's a bore depth, you wouldn't check your drop clock inside there. If it's an outside diameter or a length, you'll check your shadow graph. Okay. How do they know? I'm just thinking if it drops into a bucket, how do you know which one was the last part that came off it? Well, it's usually it stays onside the belt, so that's what we know. So when it goes off the camp, on the belt, the blue belt that we'll have, there's a one component sitting there. You, got, you guys, you, you guys yeah, are doing yeah, it all right. Yeah. Okay, and so also, um, uh, quite a lot of the sliding head shops, these, so these applications are oil and gas, aerospace? Yeah, medical as well, stuff like that. It's mostly oil and gas we do here, really. And so because because they're quite uh, controlled environments, you need what Ian's looking at right now, a part washer. Now, yeah, yeah. So what, what does this do? So that's quite new as well. So what we do with that is there's, uh, there's things there, right? It has cycle times. So it's like machines, really. So if you want to clean longer, you'll put it in longer cycle times. So it can be three minutes, five minutes, six minutes, some are 20 minutes for the parts that go to oil rigs. That's the kind of, that's the thing. So they need to be really clean, there needs to be no, no impurities. Yeah, because you can't, uh, if you're cleaning them and they're getting gold plated, they'll have to be completely clean. They can't get any, any oil, any things on them there. Okay, let's, let's keep moving on. So we've got part washing and then over here, is this, what, what, what is this area here? This is where we check the concentricity of them pins I was on about. So when the pins come back from, um, from the customer, uh, the plating, sorry. We've got, we got a pin, we got. Pin here. When they come back from the post plating, we will check them 100% on that uh, thing there. So you put them between centers yes. on the plastic pins, yeah, plastic there. pins here, you put that in there, put yeah, that in there, you clock, clock up. Concentric to 3,000. 3,000? 3,000 3, yeah. So, so. so that's across the whole, the whole length yes. of the Yes, yes, basically. Oh my God. That's amazing. Brilliant. Okay, so you've also got an old SA20 here. We could talk about that. We, we could probably talk about yeah. what you guys do here at GA Sliding Head all day, but let's move on to the most important part. We talked a little bit about inspection, but let's go and have a look at your, your proper inspection department, see where, where they check all the parts are absolutely bang on. And here we come to the inspection department. Some would say probably the most important part of the machine shop, because if you don't know you're making good parts, then you definitely can't be sending them out to customers. Uh, and in the inspection department, there's, there's lots of different um, 
special modern specialist modern machinery. Now, Stuart, you run the inspection department here? Yes, yes. Brilliant. So why is it important to inspect parts? It's very important. We've got to make sure the parts uh, are exact to the drawing specification. Brilliant. And do different customers require different uh, inspection, uh, I guess, how critical the inspection needs to be? Uh, yes, it does vary. Um, some customers uh, have really tight tolerances, um, so we've got to make sure the we machine inspect to the tolerances required as to draw on. What about batch batch inspection? Do you inspect every part, or do you inspect like a one in, one in 50? Are there different, different plans for uh, different customers? Uh, I guess it's, uh, it depends on the customer. Um, the customer um, gives us the, the specification, well, requirements. Uh, we've got to inspect to uh, the sampling that the customer requires. Okay, so they'll all require different sampling rates, the not just one, maybe not one, every part, it might be one in 50, might be one in 100. Yeah. When do you inspect um, one in 50, one in 100? Do you employ different methods? So obviously you can get, mic you can get mic micrometers, verniers, um, depth gauges. You've got some very different equipment here. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, kind of what kind of inspection is, are this, is this equipment used for? Yes, this is, a, this is for a brand new Vichy Vision uh, M306 Techno. Um, it's um, automated um, and what the reason we bought it for is so we can, um, we can inspect a lot, a lot more parts, a lot more faster than using the standard shadow graph. So the shadow graph here, this is also a brand new machine as well. You guys are obviously investing in the manual machine as well. Mm -hmm. What is the difference? Would, what happens, obviously you have to put your part in the shadow graph, but do you have to manually go and line up every single dimension? How does it work? Yeah, um, this is fairly manual. Um, it's pr pretty much set manually by the um, by the, the team member, um, whereas this is uh, pretty much just be placed apart between centers and um, it's programmed, so it's just a matter of pressing the button and inspects um, pretty much all the external dimensions on the part. Okay, so I guess you have and to write a program for this system, yeah. but once you've written the program, um, is, is the inspection a lot quicker than a sh on a shadow graph? A lot faster. Um, it would take, you know, hours on the shadow graph to measure the same amount of uh, dimensions that we measure in pretty much minutes, seconds sometimes. Okay, so since it's taking seconds rather than minutes or, or, or twen even 20 minutes, does that mean that you inspect more parts or do you just get through that inspection um, package of parts quicker? A, a lot quicker. Um, like I say, customers uh, sampling requirements are a lot more higher volume parts. So we may, to need, may need to inspect 80, uh, 100, 125 samples. And that would take a long time on the shadow graph? Yeah, that would take. That would take a long time. Let's move on to, you've got another, you've got the, o, the an OGP um, smart scope here. So now, what, what is this machine for? Uh, this machine is very similar to the Vici Vision. It's, um, it's a high magnification optical machine uh, with touch probe. Um, the difference obviously is it's a stage machine. Um, so what do you mean by stage? Well, it's, as you can see, it's a horizontal stage. So this uh, pretty much takes the place replaces the shadow graph. Oh, you mean because something's sat flat on, the s on yeah. a stage, it's, yep. it's sat flat down on the bed? Yes, um, so we could, we could sit the part on here on, on V-blocks or between centers, and uh, we can check to, um, I guess, down to uh, micrometers, plus or minus one mic. And it's amazing, I guess, you still need, even though you can invest in all this fancy equipment and all the specialist tech which speeds up inspection, you're still investing in shadow graphs today. Yes, yes, it uh, still does a job for us. Um, like I say, we've got quite a, you know, a mix of equipment. Um, this is obviously the, the equipment we use for high volume. And this is this shadow graph equipment for maybe, I guess, one-offs, um, lower volume uh, parts. Definitely. But you need the equipment for high volume parts when you're making, I think it was something like, uh, I don't know, it was 100,000 parts a month you guys might be put out? Yeah, it's thousands of parts we can make, yeah. So we, we need the automation to, uh, uh, you know, speed up the process. Brilliant. So that's GA Sliding Head in Dundee. What a fantastic sliding head machine shop.